It was a town so small it barely appeared on maps, nestled deep in a valley where the sun only touched briefly each day. In this forgotten place lived a man named Thomas Gray, a quiet, unassuming figure who preferred the solace of his old, creaking house to the bustling lives of his neighbors. Thomas's house was an imposing structure, seeming more ancient than it was, ancient and looming, sitting at the edge of the town like a sentinel, but Thomas held a secret. The townsfolk whispered about Thomas and his wife, Eleanor, whom no one had seen in years. They spoke of Eleanor's unnatural abilities, claiming she could bend the will of anyone within her mental reach. Some called her a witch, others a demon, but all agreed that she was to be feared. Thomas lived in perpetual twilight, shrouded by the dark history of his wife and the chilling aura that clung to their home. The townspeople's avoidance only deepened his isolation. He often found himself talking to Eleanor, though she never really replied due to the stroke she had suffered a few years prior. Their conversations were one-sided, filled with memories of better days and the dark twist that had turned their love into a town's nightmare. At first, the whispers seemed like petty gossip, but soon... Thomas couldn't ignore the odd occurrences around him. Neighbors he'd known for years started acting strangely, as if their minds weren't their own anymore. It was subtle at first. A strange look in their eyes, a sudden shift in behavior, an unexplained hostility or compliance. Thomas began to suspect that Eleanor's powers were real, that she was somehow projecting her will across the town. It started with Mr. Carter, who had always been a kind and gentle soul. One day he turned up at the town square, shouting obscenities and accusing the townsfolk of plotting against him. His eyes were wild, his movements erratic. When Thomas tried to calm him down, Carter looked through him as if he didn't exist and ran off into the woods, never to be seen again. Thomas tried to confront Eleanor about the townspeople's fears but the house seemed to swallow his words, the echoes of his pleas bouncing off the walls and disappeared into the shadowy corners. Eleanor never emerged from her room on the top floor, and Thomas began to dread the times when he had to climb the stairs to deliver her meals. As the days passed, the influence of Eleanor's unseen hand grew stronger. People began to vanish without a trace, leaving only eerie silence in their wake. Thomas's suspicions turned to terror. What if Eleanor wasn't just manipulating their thoughts, but driving them to their doom? Mrs. Thompson, the school teacher, was the next to fall under Eleanor's spell. She had always been patient and nurturing, but one day she snapped. In the middle of a lesson, she began screaming at the children, accusing them of conspiring to fail her. She stormed out of the classroom, leaving the children in tears. That night, she was found wandering the streets, muttering to herself about voices in her head. Witnesses watched as she stumbled her way out of town. The next morning, the class had a new teacher. One night, the tension reached a breaking point. Thomas awoke to the sound of whispers, a chorus of disembodied voices filling his mind. He stumbled through the house, calling out to Eleanor, but received no answer, as usual. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they formed coherent words, urging him to find her, to end the nightmare. Driven by fear and desperation, Thomas burst into Eleanor's room. The bed was empty, covered in dust. The room smelled of decay and abandonment. Thomas's heart raced as he searched the room, finding nothing but old photographs and mementos of a life that felt increasingly unreal. His legs shook and the room seemed to spin around him. The next morning, he awoke on the floor next to the bed with Eleanor staring down at him from where she was always at, smiling devilishly. He quickly got up, kissed her forehead, and exited the room. In the following days, the town fell further into chaos. People turned on each other, convinced that their neighbors were under Eleanor's spell. Thomas watched helplessly as the peaceful community he had known disintegrated into paranoia 
and violence. He became a recluse, locking himself in the house, afraid of the unseen force that seemed to be orchestrating the madness from within his own home. Eleanor's manipulations became more sinister. The town's baker, Mr. Hughes, suddenly developed a violent temper. He was known for his generosity, always offering free bread to those in need. But under Eleanor's influence, he began hoarding his goods, accusing customers of trying to steal from him. When confronted by the sheriff, Hughes attacked him with a rolling pin, screaming about voices that commanded him to protect his bakery. His bakery closed down shortly after and Mr. Hughes was never heard from again, like so many others. One stormy night, Thomas made a fateful decision. He would confront Eleanor one last time and demand the truth. Armed with a lantern and his wavering resolve, he climbed the stairs to her room. With every painful step, his heart pounded harder. By the time he was outside his wife's door, he could feel his pulse in his temples. As he opened the door, a gust of wind extinguished his lantern, plunging him into darkness. Thomas fumbled for a match, his fingers trembling as he struck it against the box. The flickering light revealed a figure standing by the window, her back to him. It was Eleanor, or what he thought was Eleanor. She turned slowly, her face obscured by shadows, and spoke in a voice that seemed to echo from the walls. I know what you want. You're too late, Thomas. They're all mine now. Thomas felt a chill run down his spine. He stepped forward, the match lit, casting eerie shadows around the room. What have you done, Eleanor? Why? Why are you doing this? Eleanor's <laughs> laughter filled the room, a sound that sent shivers down Thomas's bones. You don't understand, do you? They were always mine. I'm simply reminding them of that. Thomas's mind raced. What did she mean? How could she have such power? He wanted to flee, to escape the madness, but he was rooted to the spot, unable to tear his eyes away from the spectral figure before him. In a desperate attempt to break free from the nightmare, Thomas lunged at Eleanor, but his hands passed through her as if she were made of smoke. He stumbled and fell, his match extinguished, plunging him into darkness. Thomas lay on the floor gasping for breath, his mind a whirlwind of confusion and fear. He felt a presence looming over him, cold and oppressive. Slowly he pushed himself up and reached for the door, intending to flee the cursed room. But as he turned the handle, the door wouldn't budge. He was trapped. The whispers returned, louder and more insistent than ever. They filled his mind, urging him to surrender to join Eleanor in her twisted dominion. Thomas clamped his hands over his ears, but the voices only grew louder, drowning out his own thoughts. In a final act of desperation, Thomas screamed into the void, What do you want from me? Silence fell thick and heavy, broken only by the sound of his own ragged breathing. Then a voice clear and unmistakable echoed through the room. You've always known, Thomas. You just refuse to see. The room began to spin, the walls closing in around him. This poor, frail old man. Thomas felt as if he were being pulled into a vortex, a maelstrom of memories and emotions. He closed his eyes, trying to anchor himself in reality. But the boundaries between past and present, real and imagined, began to blur. As the storm in his mind subsided, Thomas found himself standing in a different room altogether, one he recognized from years ago. It was their bedroom, from before Eleanor's death. Eleanor lay in bed, frail and pale, her life slipping away. Thomas stood by her side, holding her hand, tears streaming down his face. Don't leave me, he pleaded with his voice breaking. I can't do this without you. Eleanor's eyes, once vibrant, were now dull and distant. You have to let go, Thomas. You have to live. Thomas shook his head, refusing to accept the inevitable. No, I won't. I can't. As Eleanor took her final breath, the room faded, and Thomas found himself back in the present, alone in the darkness. 
the realization hit him like a punch to the gut. Eleanor was gone. She had been gone for years. The whispers, the manipulation, the chaos, it had all been in his mind. He had been projecting his grief and guilt onto the town, creating an elaborate fantasy to avoid facing the truth. The townspeople, the strange occurrences, even Eleanor's ghostly presence were all figments of his tortured imagination. Thomas sank to the floor, overwhelmed by the weight of his revelation. He had been living a lie, trapped in a prison of his own making. The house, once a sanctuary, had become his purgatory. As he sat there, lost in his thoughts, the sun began to rise, casting its first light on the valley. For the first time in years, Thomas felt a glimmer of hope he could break free from the shadows of his past. Thomas rose slowly, his body aching but his spirit lighter. He opened the door to Eleanor's room and stepped out into the hallway. The house seemed different, less oppressive, as if a weight had been lifted. He walked through each room, opening windows and letting the light in, dispelling the darkness that had held him captive for so long. Then it hit him like a ton of bricks. If Eleanor was gone all this time, who or what was manifesting in the minds of the people in town? What unseen force was manipulating those around him? The curtains seemed to draw themselves closed, followed by the horrible oppression, sadness, darkness, his mind spinning with madness, as if his thoughts weren't of his own. Then the voice, and this time it wasn't that of his beloved wife, deep. Sinister. It's you, Thomas. It's always been you all along. The memories came back to him in a whirlwind of chaos. His grief had driven him to insanity. The guilt of what he had done washing over him like boiling water, burning him inside and out. All the people he had manipulated, all those missing, all his fault. His mind cluttered with the pain of losing his wife and hurting everyone around him, for it was too much to bear. Thomas ran to the windows and threw back the curtains of each one again, not paying attention to anything other than getting light into his ancient home. But at the last window of the second floor, Thomas stopped. He opened the window to proclaim the nightmare was over to anyone within earshot. But when he did, there was no one there. No people. No town. Just the wilderness around him. Encasing him. Containing him. The town had never been real. There was no town, no missing school teacher, no angry baker. It was all in his mind. Some years later, a group of hikers stumbled upon an old house in the middle of the forest. It looked as if it was never meant to be discovered, and time was not kind to this home. With a curious nature, two of the hikers decided to look inside. The rotted wood door creaked open in pain, as if to scream to its occupants, warning them someone was intruding. As the hikers entered the rundown home, they felt the darkness grab them like an icy blanket. But there, on the floor of the first room, was the skeletal remains of Thomas Gray, still clutching a revolver in his bony fingers. Thomas had taken his own life, and no one knew. If you've enjoyed this story, check out another one linked at the end of this one if you enjoy that one as well consider hitting the subscribe button to help me continue making more stories of the paranormal and supernatural. Until the next time, stay weird.